Hi, this is Tim. Today we're going to talk about how encoders actually track position because there seems to be a lot of myths and a lot of misconceptions about this topic. For this video, we're going to be using one of our PLC trainers. This is a Micro 850 PLC trainer that we've kind of relocated the HMI to the back of. And we're going to be using our encoder simulator. That way I don't have to sit here and spend the encoder forever. And in our previous video, we talked about how to configure your Micro 850 PLC for a high-speed counter application. Actually, it works with any Micro 800 PLC that has a high-speed option module or if it has high-speed inputs on the base unit. We have our high-speed counter going and also I have the value right here going up. But now I want to show you what it actually looks like when we connect a scope to it. And I'm going to need a trusty assistant. Do I have a trusty assistant anywhere? Yeah. Okay, I have an assistant. So Michael, my trusty assistant, lean in for a second so everybody can see you. There's Michael, my trusty assistant. Thank you very much. But when we connect to it, we can see we're getting two signals. And now I'm going to bring our time base further out. And if we zoom way out, well, we see a bunch of dashed line. But let me see if I can get this adjusted. There, now we're starting to see this square wave pattern that the A and B signal are making. And so one goes up, and then the next one goes up. And then one goes down, and the next one goes down. And so Michael doesn't have to hold this the entire time. I've made this handy graph to use the rest of the video. Thank you very much, Michael. You're welcome. So this is what you were seeing on the scope is A would come up and then B would come up and then A would go down and then B would go down and then they would go up again in this square wave pattern. And so inside of our encoder, in this case, there are 1,024 marks that it can go up and down on. And then the A and B are offset 90 degrees. And so on our page, that means that they're offset 25%. These up-down patterns end up making four distinct transitions. And this is that quadrature part that you hear about in a quadrature encoder is first, we have A going from off to on or on to all with B all. Then we have B going on to off or off to on with A on. Then we have A going from on to off or off to on with B on. And finally, we have B going from off to on or on to off with A off. Now that was a lot of very confusing A's and B's, but now, Let's talk just about the transition of this A channel and how we can use it, one to determine forward and reverse, and then we're gonna get two of our counts, one direction or the other off of this. So I've made two points here, and really it's A either going on this way or A is going on this way. So first, A turns on with B on. So if we go A this direction, B is off. But if we go this direction, B is gonna be on. So A, when it goes on and B is off, that's gonna be moving in this reverse direction. And so that's what I've done right here is I've shown A turns on with B on, we're going reverse. So that's one count in reverse. Then we could also be A turns on with B off. So this way where B is on, this way B is off. So that's gonna be forward direction, one count. And then finally we have A is on and it's turning off. So first we could have A on and it goes off with B off. And that's right here and that's gonna be reversing. And then the other side is forward. If A turns off with B on, we're moving forward. So now we've been able to determine with the A and B marker, both our direction and two counts. Now the other two counts come from the transition from the B. So B can be off and it can go on this way or it can go on this way. So if B goes from off to on and A's off, it's gonna be moving reverse. If B goes from off to on and A is on, then it's gonna be moving forward. And same thing on our off to on transition. So B goes from on to off and A is on, we're gonna be moving reverse. 
and B goes from on to off and A is off, we're gonna be moving forward, which is gonna bring us to this final diagram. And these are the transitions that will count in the reverse direction. These are the transitions that will count in the forward direction. So you have four spots here that really break this whole signal down. And that's your quadrature part. And then depending on where those A's and B's are during those transitional moments, the encoder can figure out forward, reverse, add, subtract. So at this point, that should be clear as mud. So now we are actually going to write a program in our ladder diagram to keep track of our encoder simulator. 